Chris Woodthorpe was appointed by United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon as Director of the United Nations Information Centre in Canberra in 2009. In addition to Australia, this organisation uh, covers Fiji, Nauru, New Zealand, Samoa, Tonga, Tuvalu and Vanuatu. Prior to joining the United Nations, Mr Woodthorpe uh, worked with McGraw-Hill as Director of Marketing and Healthcare Information Services and also worked as Director of North American Operations for Medical China. Mr Woodthorpe has a Master of Arts degree in Geography from Cambridge University and has a long history of supporting various UN activities in this region. Please make him feel welcome. Thank you, Adam, um, and good evening, everyone. Uh, it is a great pleasure to be with you today. I want to start first just to thank Alan for the wonderful welcome he gave us um, and to acknowledge his people and also uh, the Wiradjuri people, uh, of the, uh, the people of the land of where we're meeting today, um, and to pay my respects to their elders, past and present. With so many of you here, and taking part of this conference, it's incredibly heartening. So many of you from different parts of the world showing such a strong commitment to the work of the United Nations and the issues that lie at the core of our work. Human rights, international peace and security, social and economic development. It's also an amazing feat that you've brought this conference together. I know from working on UN conferences how much work goes into them and I have nothing but admiration for the organizing committee and for you and for the supporting organizers I congratulate you. I know ahead of you long long hours in the committee rooms and in the plenary with all the highs and lows of tough negotiations compromises made to reach those final resolutions. I hope it's a week you'll all relish and enjoy and let's not forget that last part I know from having a son and daughter that attended Model UNs that there is a fun side to it all. In fact, sometimes there can be too much fun, as their high school found out when it was banned by Harvard. I hasten to add that was well before my son and daughter were in the Model UN program. But joking aside, the social side is, is just as important, for as in the corridors of the UN itself, it is often here that the relations are built behind the scenes that help you move your positions to be part of a consensus. Today I would like to talk to you about a subject that should be close to you all, the global situation of youth, as well as how this feeds into the current development agenda and the role you can play. But before doing so, and in recognition of the importance of your participation in this Model UN conference, it is my pleasure and honor to be able to read for you the message of support that has been addressed to you by the UN Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon. So starting with his words, your participation in this model UN comes at a time when the international community increasingly recognizes the power of young people to change our world. I am proud to have appointed the first ever United Nations envoy on youth Ahmad Alawid Adawi, a 29-year-old from Jordanian. He will be an advocate who will stand up for your interests and advise me on how we can best respond to issues of concern to the world's young people. The United Nations has also dedicated a trust fund to boost youth volunteerism and harness the energy of young people from different countries to help us reach our global development goals. These and other measures aimed at empowering young people are part of our effort to enlist youth in helping to address the turmoil and uncertainty that grip much of our world, from tense transitions and armed conflicts to economic and environmental distress across the globe. We are being tested every minute of every day. I'm calling on governments to help us stop moving from crisis to crisis and instead address the underlying causes and interrelationships. At the same time, we know that lasting solutions to global problems no longer lie in the hands of governments alone. The United Nations of the 21st century 
is advancing through networks and coalitions. We need you to be full partner in our campaign for a better world. I have met countless people over the course of my career whose dedication to public service could be traced back to when, at a young age, they attended a conference where students debated international issues under the blue UN flag. I count on you to use the negotiating skills you learn in Model UN to help navigate the real world problems we face. Join forces with like-minded individuals and groups to promote understanding and generate positive change. Link to the United Nations through our Twitter and Facebook accounts. Continue to draw on the experience to help and inspire others. This will enrich you as individuals and enhance our common future. Those were the words of Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. So may, may these words of the Secretary General encourage you over the coming days as you contribute your perspectives on a range of global issues and impact that will impact your future. The UN has long recognized that young people are a major human resource for development and key agents for social change, economic growth, and technological innovation. At the same time, they are most impacted by such change. Today, young people between 15 and 24 represent approximately 18% of our global population. That's nearly 1.2 billion people. Many youth remain marginalized from social and economic opportunities with limited access to essential resources. 87% of the youth population lives in developing countries and nearly 45% of all youth globally lives on less than $2 a day. Youth are among the most vulnerable of all persons the MDGs are aiming to reach. Whether it is poverty, hunger, lack of education, maternal mortality, unemployment, environmental degradation, or HIV AIDS, the impact on young people can be far greater than on their older counterparts. This is because many young people often lack access to information, schooling, social influence, and basic rights, and are often overlooked in national and development agendas. Therefore, young people's participation and inclusion in efforts to achieve all of the goals are crucial to ensure a successful and sustainable outcome. According to the last United Nations World Youth Report, young people around the world are deeply concerned about lacks of, the lack of job opportunities and are calling for an increased investment in this area. In the aftermath of the economic crisis, the global youth unemployment rate saw its largest annual increase on record in 2009, resulting in 75.8 million unemployed youth. The report revealed that young people are also worried about the quality and relevance of their education, labor migration, delayed marriage, and the rural divide, as well as age, gender, and racial discrimination. As the Secretary General recently said, today we have the largest generation of young people the world has ever known. They are demanding their rights and a greater voice in economic and political life. And the UN is striving to address these demands so, as you've just heard from the Secretary General in his letter, a key element of the five-year action agenda of his second term is addressing the needs of young people by deepening youth focus on existing programs on employment, entrepreneurship, political inclusion, citizenship, and protection of rights, education, and in including reproductive health. One of the key priorities of the UN agenda on youth is participation in decision-making. Participation is a fundamental right. It is one of the guiding principles of the Uni Universal Declaration of Human Rights that has been reiterated in many other conventions and declarations. Through active participation, young people are empowered to play a vital role in their own development as well as that of their communities, helping them to learn vital life skills, develop knowledge on human rights and citizenship, and to promote positive civic action. So this is particularly significant for us in 2013 as we approach the target date for the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals. The MDGs remain high on, prior, on the priority of the UN's development agenda, particularly as the target date of 2015 draws closer. Enormous progress has been made towards achieving the MDGs. 
Global poverty continues to decline. More children than ever are attending primary school. School deaths have dropped dramatically. Access to safe drinking water has been greatly expanded. And targeted investments in fighting malaria, AIDS, and tuberculosis have saved millions. The last decade has brought a remarkable improvement in people's lives, but progress has been uneven. Millions of people, particularly the poorest and most marginalized, particularly minorities, women and girls, are being left behind. And disparities between and within countries, especially between urban and rural areas, remain. A new agenda to continue efforts beyond 2015 is taking shape. With its success, as well as setbacks, the MDG campaign provides rich experience for this discussion to draw on, as well as confidence that further success is feasible. Thinking has already begun, begun on how to advance the development agenda beyond 2015. The United Nations, along with many partners, as well as governments and civil society stakeholders, are now looking at prospects for the post-2015 agenda. To this end, the UN has already undertaken several initiatives. This includes the establishment of a UN task team to coordinate preparations for beyond 2015, a high-level high -level panel made up of civil society, private sector, and government leaders to advise on global development framework. The United Nations Development Group is also facilitating national consultations in over 50 countries, holding global thematic consultations on key issues pertaining to post-2015 agenda. The World We Want web portal has been developed to facilitate these consultations, allowing the wider community and the general public, to particularly youth, to engage directly in the various consultations taking place. Young people who will be largely responsible for implementing this framework are central to the consultations. This means that you have the opportunity, as never before, to influence the development framework from the earlier stages of the process. And I applaud that you have taken up the challenge through your high-level youth summit, which I had the pleasure of addressing this morning. The world we want will gather the priorities of people from every corner of the world and help build a collective vision that will be directed by the United Nations and world leaders. In addition to this, the United Nations and partners are leading a global survey called My World. The UN has teamed up with youth groups, private sectors, NGO partners from all over the world to launch My World, which asks citizens everywhere about the issues that make the most differences to their lives. Through creative online and offline methods, it asks which of, the six or 16, which of six of 16 possible issues people think would make the most difference to their lives. These have been generated through research and polling of a number of people, particularly the poor, as well as adding in the existing Millennium Development Goals, issues of sustainability, security, governance, and transparency. The results of this survey will be presented to global leaders and will paint an accurate global picture of the top six issues that impact people's lives the most. Thousands of people from 189 countries have already voted across all countries and all groups. Preliminary results showing education is the issue that people think is most important for improving their lives. An honest and responsive government, health, water, sanitation, and food security have also been considered major priorities. Better job opportunities rank as an important priority for people living in less developed countries. So in the run-up to the 2015, my world will continue gathering people's voices and the results will be shared with the Secretary General and global leaders. The United Nations and partners invite citizens everywhere to take the survey and I encourage you all to visit my world and join the post-2015 process to define the world we want. And information on this is found in your catalogues of programs of the conference. And now I don't know if we're able to show a quick video. I'm looking to the left here. Supposedly if I do that, the video comes on. <laughs>
Hello, I'm Ban Ki-moon, Secretary General of the United Nations, and I want to hear from you. The United Nations is working on a development agenda for 2015 and beyond. My world is a global survey on development priorities. Vote and tell us what issues matter most to you and your family. Go online, use your mobile phone, or send in your ballot. Make a difference, mark a difference. Take part in my world survey and help us build a better world for all. I know the Secretary General would have loved to have been with you, so at least we have the honor of his presence on the screen. I want to encourage you to use the knowledge and skills you gain from this model UN to advance the objectives of the UN. You will hear from knowledgeable and inspiring speakers, exchange ideas and experiences with delegates from all parts of the globe. Develop skills and perspectives that will prepare you for your careers with a global impact. The UN needs your engagement to help us shape our world for the better and to deliver what the world needs at this crucial time and in the future. I wish you all the most rewarding Model UN. Thank you all. <laughs>